The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to look at the German DAX like we always do. Nothing's really changed here, folks. We could go either way, uh, as you can see, without any trouble. And the FTSE is even is even more quiet. If you'll take a look at this one, it is uh, been in the same range here for what six or seven days. Oh, more than that, ten days. So not really much is happening to either one of those. I want to address a question that um, one of our listeners in the den uh, today said, uh, uh, Maria thought that the uh, she could see a retest of the 2910 in the S&P 500. They, that, is a, that could certainly be, happen. You know, I mean, I don't know whether that's going to happen or not, but the good thing is nobody else does either. I have a commitment on something that I think the market might move lower. If you think it's going to go higher, that's your opinion, but I, I don't I don't know what else to say. I mean, I'm wrong a lot, folks. Look at me. I missed a I missed a seventy five dollar move in gold because I thought I could buy it back cheaper. You think I don't feel pretty good about that one? Not very good at all. Anyway, let's uh, let's move on to a couple of things that people have asked me about. One is this open interest thing, folks. I only I only check on open interest when the market is it is making a huge move out of a consolidation area, like we had with gold, or if it's making new highs uh, in the market, and I see something a little bit differently. Let me show you how how simple it is to do this. I'm going to just I printed this out, and I'm going to post it up here. Oh, shut the front door and raise the rent. Hold on here, just a minute there. There we go. You just go to www.cme.com, and then you you see where it says across there that big green arrow. You just click on the data data arrow, and then that takes you in the volume and open interest section. And as you can see there on the right, the only one that's in black is metals. That's become that's the one we're looking at. And you just go down, and you can see that the net change in copper futures yesterday was minus 5,476. If prices are going up and open interest is dropping, that means the market is weakening. That's what that means, because that's short covering. If we look at this from another standpoint, and we'll just get this up here again, so you'll be able to see. It's really simple to do, folks. Go to www.cme.com, and all you have to do is click on data, and here it says daily open interest volume, and notice the one in black is open interest, that's for yesterday, and you'll notice there for the 10-year Treasury note, which is the largest of all the commodities traded, you notice they have 3.7 million outstanding contracts. The nearest one from that, I believe, is the S&P, and that's a mini contract. You know, that's a, you know, that's a baby contract, down one-tenth from what it used to be. So it's down 94,955. It was up yesterday. The market is weakening. Those statistics come right out of, you know, uh, John Murphy's book, I'll get this up here so you can take a quick look at it and do this yourself. Defy human nature, and you'll be able to see here that you have you have a rising price, okay, and falling open interest like we've had in the Treasury notes and Treasury bonds. The market is actually weakening, okay? And in the copper, you had a rising prices and falling open interest. The market is weakening. With gold, you have a rising price and a rising open interest. The market is very strong. That's all that's telling you. The players are coming into the market. The CME is an auction house, folks. For every buyer, there has to be a seller. It's not like with ETFs and other stuff where they make this stuff up. That's mainly uh, what you're watching when you're when you're doing these kind of things. So that's why I think it's uh, so very important to try to understand that. You know, that's all I'm looking at. Uh, Okay, let's move on here. We had a big move in gold yesterday. Folks, I tell you, I had to do something yesterday for one of my neighbors here, and I had to leave for a bit. And I, I was I was short, so I had a couple of 
I was never mind. I was I had a very small position in in silver to the short side. And I, when I was listening to the radio, I don't have a fancy phone to get prices and stuff. I heard that the price of gold was at fourteen thirty, and I said, "Oh, there goes my my silver trade." And I figured I lost my five cents. And when I came back, I couldn't believe it. It I, it couldn't even take out the previous day's high on a run when gold was up thirty five dollars on the day. Shut the front door. Unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. Anyway, that's what's going on here. So uh, keep in mind that uh, you know sometimes these markets don't do what you think they're going to do. Um, the other uh, question that I wanted to uh, pose here is that I, I did post a trade yesterday uh, that I thought was interesting, and uh, I don't know if it's going to work or not. But if you'll notice here in this euro, uh, we, we were selling that euro up around that 114.08 level. It dropped about 35 pips last night. And I don't think I don't even know where it's trading right now. Last time I checked, it was 13.95. The way I do that now is I just lower my stop to just a tick or two above that old high, so my risk is almost nothing. You know, that's the uh, that's the main thing that uh, I, I try to do. But you don't always do it that way. But that's what I'm trying to do. I've been asked to take a look at uh, Apple, and I wanted to bring this to your attention here. This is, of course, the, one of the most act well, it is the biggest actively traded stock in the world, wildest white is held. You'll notice um, we made a 1.27 expansion on the downside when it was trading down there at 142. We went up to the 78% level, a $78, $73 rally went up there at uh, 215 and change. We came down to the 61% retracement again. These are perfect numbers, folks. If you don't think Fibonacci works, it doesn't work all the time, but it's certainly working with Apple. You'll notice that we're above the 61% retracement, and most probably it looks like we want to go to about 204 uh, in the uh, in Apple. Now, if we get above 206, 207, that means we're probably going to go a lot higher, but it's been following these numbers, my goodness, right to a T. So you'd have to think that's what you'd think what's, that would what, what would be going on. So... That's uh, neither here nor there. Folks, we're going to have uh, Stan Harley as our guest today, and I'm going to do my level best to have Simon Lee on tomorrow or Friday. Thursday, we've got the Wizard of uh, Florida, calls it to the minute, Winsky, and today is Stan Harley. And uh, on tomorrow or Friday, I will have Simon Lee on if he's uh, in Chicago. He's traveling right now, so. We will keep a close eye on that to have him on to see what's going on. I wanted to bring a one particular uh, chart to your attention, and I know I put it. Oh, here it is. I do have it. Just a second. I've got these in order now, which makes it a little bitter. Yesterday, we were talking uh, about the hog market, folks. And one of the things that uh, we were mentioning is, is that when we had this, uh, when you had this, uh, Big gap down. Look at this, folks. You gap down below the 61% retracement, okay? Uh, that sets up a very, very bearish scenario uh, in the hogs. And just take a look what they're doing uh, to the nearby August hogs. This is an absolute debacle coming in here. And you'll notice here, folks, we made a double top in hogs at 103. Folks, we're 30 cents a pound lower. And this is in the midst of this uh, Asian flu. Now, what do you think they call that over there, folks? Guess what? Probably fake news. Is this a bunch of baloney or not? Now, you, you wonder why I'm a technician, for heaven's sakes. Give me a break. You know, you can, they can throw all the... F Larry's going to get off of his soapbox now and be calm and read a few chapters out of the good book. Uh, anyway, we'll take a little break here, and I'll be right back after my solemn time for prayer. 877-927-6648. The TAS Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
the Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I've posted a chart for margin debt, and it just goes back over the last 20 years. Of course, it's different this time, but as you notice, there is a correlation between stock market highs and lows and margin debt, and we're at a relatively high level of margin debt. You can see the S&P in blue making a triple top in there, and uh, the margin debt turned down uh, about a year ago. Uh, and then I understand from the news uh, early this morning that two of the Democrat candidates want to uh, absolve the two point some trillion dollars in student debt so that they don't have to pay that back. I think that's really great. And the fact that they're going to tax put a tax on stock trading and bond trading and futures trading. I think that's a wonderful idea because pretty soon if they keep that up, uh, we will be uh, looking like Venezuela as a. Uh, some people would say. Anyway, uh, the margin, they, they tell me that there is a, uh, a pro share for margin debt, but I, I don't know anything about those ETFs, so I'll look that up to find out if it is true or not. But this does have some pretty interesting things. That triple top to me means something because if you go to 1999 and 2000, you'll notice the S&P, uh, you'll notice that it was trading up there if you just go to to the left side over there, you see that blue lines, you see the triple top there. And then, of course, the market didn't top in the NASDAQ. Uh, the, the Dow topped in January of uh, 2000. It, the March 24th was the top in the uh, in the NASDAQ. So this means something, I'm sure. But, uh, you know, I don't trade against it. I don't use the, the uh, pro shares or anything like that. I, I really don't. So that's it. We'll have to see if that's going to be the case or not. Um, I did want to uh, bring to your attention one particular future that uh, I, I think you have to pay attention to. If And I, and I don't trade this uh, very often, uh, and that is the uh, natural gas. It had a little bit of a move yesterday, uh, up about uh, 6 or 7, about $0.10, cents, not very much. So it shouldn't get below uh, 218 
Uh, that was a low on 215 was a low on Friday. It shouldn't get below 215 if that is going to be any good or not. But we don't know if in fact it's it's going to work or not. We really, we don't. N none of us do that. I mean, that's why, you know, that's basically why I'm a uh, uh, a technician because I don't know what these things are that people are are talking to us about. There's one other one that I have on a watch list. I don't know if it's going to happen or not uh, very very t today or soon. But uh, keep an eye on uh, crude oil up around 59 uh, 59 bucks per barrel. That could be a real interesting one, folks. If you're going to be looking at a, a low risk entry into the crude oil market, it's been very bullish ever since we made that. 61% retracement, and it appears that it's uh, still moving higher this morning, and uh, we want to we want to be watching that. Um, the other one that is really interesting that uh, that looks that still in holding pattern, and that's the one we talked about yesterday. That was the live cattle still trading right near this uh, 108, 109 level. It uh, stayed in a narrow range yesterday. Uh, this is the only one of the complex uh, cattle or hogs that has any type of support down here. So uh, they're having a debacle, of course, in the hog market. Uh, Rich Anderson spoke to me early this morning, and they said they had two very, very large hedge funds that were trapped, that uh, evidently they had not gotten out of their positions on the way down that they had planned on if they had a plan like that. And now they were paying the ultimate price because there were virtually no buyers down here, and they have to try to uh, – you know, they have to get out of their longs, and that's not a good situation to have happen. So we want to watch it uh, relatively closely. And remember, folks, you know, we had this big move in the corn market. And again, you know, maybe this is all discounted. You know, we've seen this before. We got up to 465 uh, in the December corn, and uh, we haven't been above that now for, you know, well over two weeks. So it might be a situation where we uh, – We'll see, we'll see where it's at. Anyway, we'll take a look at this. Okay. Anyway, uh, I believe there's a lot of support at 432 in the Christmas corn. If we get down to that level, that's the 382 level. So I would keep a very, very close eye on that. Uh, folks, I want to mention again that Stan Harley will be our guest at the half hour, which is uh, always fun. Uh, tomorrow or Friday, I'm going to have either uh, have Simon only on Thursday. We have the Wizard of Florida. Mr. Winsky will be on. So we have to watch this uh, extreme extremely very very closely i want to check the the uh the cocoa market folks because it it someone's asked me a question about it and it hits major resistance here in the cocoa up around that 2550 level uh you'll notice that was a butterfly pattern a three drive pattern and a 61 percent retracement anytime we get above 2600 you're going to have a pretty big move in cocoa to the upside would be my uh would would be my guess but that's that's like I say, it's my guess, and I don't know, just like anybody else. We just have to wait and see. Now, you have to give me one second here because I want to double-check uh, what the markets are doing and who is calling me at this time of the morning. Uh, oh, can't do it right now, but I have to do it a little bit later. Um, let's talk Let's talk about the gold market. Oh, that's an overseas call. There's nothing I can do about that, folks. I'll have to do it a little bit later, and we'll be able to see it. Uh, Okay, someone's asked me a question. If if oil moved to be 59, I the reason why that w that's a re 61.6 percent retracement is what that is. That's really what you're looking at is when you're watching that. So pay attention to that price. It's it's just a little above 59, I believe, uh, in the uh, in the August crude. That's the one that I'm looking at. But, you know, let's just do that right now. To uh, that phone call, folks, was uh, we lost. Uh, a good friend uh, yesterday, uh, the wife of one of my tr uh, one of our students over there, uh, passed away, and uh, they were just uh, that that was just a call thanking us for the card. Anyway, let's move uh, let's move on here to the uh, the the gold market. Uh, we've had a pretty nice move in gold. Uh, we, we've had some pretty good swings here. We've had uh, just about a twenty dollar move to the downside. Uh, big swings in gold right now. Uh, I'm going to be nibbling at the short side of gold here up around this 1433 level, not risking more than about five or six bucks. But that's just the short term trading that I'm looking at. So keep an eye on that. Uh, the S&P, you know, we've had a little bit of a bounce. 
uh, from our low last night. We rallied 10 points. That's all we've been able to rally, folks, over the last few days since we topped at 29.60. We've been railing basically 10 points each time. So, you know, if we get something bigger this time, I guess it'll be probably a 15 or 20 handle move. 20 handle move will take you up to 29.62. And I believe that would be a very strong resistance uh, in this area, and we'll be able to uh, see if that's going to be the case. Um, Maria, I have I have to apologize to you, dear. When you said 29.10, I see 29.10 also. I mean, it, it is not going to happen overnight, but I, I I think that's going down. I, I, I was, I don't know, my mind was, re must have been reading 30.10 because I'm very bearish stocks. I, yeah. Stop and get off my soapbox a little bit. I don't want to get on this thing. Too much baloney here. All right, let's move on here to uh, – I want to cover the coffee market here because it's uh, really it's it's really trying. And I, I don't trade. I'm thinking of trading it. But uh, look at this really nice pattern that we have here uh, in coffee if it happens. And I will trade this one. If we get down here in coffee, that's what I'm looking at, Okay. That's, I'd like to see it down about another 10 cents, down to about uh, 90 cents a pound. I will be looking to buy the coffee there. That's a perfect Gartley. Stay tuned for Stan Harley, and we'll be right back. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesamento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letters. Are you there, my friend? Good morning, Larry, down in Tucson. How are you? <laughs> I am good, my friend. We have a question from someone here at TFNN that is totally confused, and it happens to be me. Do you have any idea about these uh, zero interest rates and negative interest rates that, uh, that they're talking about? Well, I, Larry, it's my uh, belief uh, interest rates are heading lower, okay. uh, not higher. And okay. uh, in my latest report, uh, which you have there on your desk, I, uh, I show a 40-year uh, pattern in interest rates going back to the 1800s. Uh, the oh. last uh, – in 1860, uh, the yield on the 30-year Treasury uh, made a high. Uh, 40 years later, 1900, made a low. 1940 made another low. Uh, 1981 made a high. The next uh, pivotal turn in that 40-year cycle, uh, by my count, is due mm, November, December 2022. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, uh, sure, over in Europe, uh, rates are below zero. Mm -hmm. My sense is we're going to do a double bottom with the 1940 low, which got down to around 1.8. And I would suspect we'll get down into that range, could be a little above, could be a little bit below, but essentially a double bottom with the 1940 low. So I'd look for the yield on the 30-year Treasury to get back to 1.8 plus or minus, somewhere in that range. Um, wow. So the, the pressure is, is down. Now, mm -hmm. after uh, the latter part, once we begin 2023, I think things are going to get very interesting across the board. <laughs> but we got... We got three and a half years of party time, uh, and I heard you on the air a little while ago talking about giving, spreading candy out to everybody who wants to uh, get free student loans. Uh, I was a student in college, but I paid my own bills. I didn't need, need mm. did not need somebody else to. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, but, anyway, but Stan, we, when we went to school, the tuition was ten dollars a year. Yeah, it's all relative, Larry. Yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> yeah, it's all relative. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, I, when you hear what these people pay to go to school, like forty-eight thousand to Harvard and Dartmouth, which I think is the most expensive college, is uh, close to seventy-five thousand, I believe. So. Well, I've got two sons. One, one of which is a graduate of University of Arizona. I, I know all about writing those checks. <laughs> yeah. Well, Arizona, we need those. That's for sure. Yes. <laughs> hey, listen, Stan. Before we do the stock market, um, uh, what what's your feeling on the uh, the precious metals? Are we uh, are we near a high in this area? Larry, I think so. Uh, I think uh, I think we are. Uh, if uh, if one looks at a monthly chart of the metals complex, uh, I see uh, very clear evidence of a cycle that averages about 95 months. That's mm -hmm. uh, just a skosh under eight years. And uh, beginning with the January 1980 high, if you count forward in time, uh, 95 months plus or minus, uh, you'll see we tend to make pivotal highs quite regularly. The last occurrence in that cycle was in September of 2011. And uh, my regression, regression modeling uh, suggests that uh, we are awfully doggone close to the next high. We are right now, what is that, about 92 months or so from that high. So we're there. We're essentially there. Now, pinning it down to the day, week, minute, hour is the challenge. Uh, I also look at weekly, and I also look at daily data. Uh, silver, I heard you on the air talking about that a little while, yes. about a half an hour ago. Silver is yes. lagging gold considerably. I've never and, seen that uh, happen, Stan. Not, well, I've never yeah. seen a divergence like that before. Have you seen that before, where silver is well, lagging so badly? You know, it, it's it's all – it's. Different every time, but divergences mean something. Uh, and, they, of course, they mean something at the tail end of a turn, of course. They could go on for protracted periods of time. But I think what we're in is uh, if one goes back and looks at the 1980 peak, and you saw a sharp drop into 1982. Then you saw a uh, retracement rally, and then the trend continued lower. I think what we're experiencing now is analogous to that. That is the September 2011 high is roughly analogous to the January 1980 high. We saw the sharp drop bottom in December of 2015. We've been coming back up, chug a lug, chug a lug, higher, uh, more or less. Now we're right at the next 95 cycle high, a 95 month cycle high. We're either there or we're very, very close, in my opinion. 
And then I look at the divergence on the silver chart, and that says, uh, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that really shocked me yesterday when I saw what silver had done. Uh, given the fact that gold was up three thousand dollars, silver couldn't even be up two cents. That I, I, I just hadn't seen that. Maybe I saw it, and I don't remember it. That's for sure. Stan, one of the things that you're talking about in your letter. Uh, is pretty obvious by looking at the charts and at this monster triple top or whatever it is. But you assume that we're going to break out to the upside uh, on this. Is that correct? Uh, I am, Larry. And uh, you go ahead and show that chart, if you would, please, from page okay, two. Okay, sure. You bet. Uh, yeah, I'm lo looking at it on the screen. Um, we've got the what we've got the GAN rule of four developing here, and this has been my theme for some time. And uh, this is a pattern, at least to my knowledge, was first. Uh, observed and commented upon by W.D. Gann about 100 years ago. He called this pattern uh, the rule of four and simply stated the rule of four applies when a market either advances to a level of resistance or perhaps a, a Gann angle or a trend line. There are essentially three touch points initially which all fail to punch through and then the fourth time is make or break. And uh, that's mm -hmm. exactly what's going on now. Uh, if you look at the Dow Industrials, as you're showing there on the screen, uh, mm -hmm. 25,000 is a major overhead uh, threshold of resistance. We've had three attempts to break through. We've got a little bit above it, but each time we pull back below 25K. We tried mm -hmm. in January of 2018, again in October of 2018, again in May of 2019, and each of those three attempts failed. The market fell back below 25K, and here we are struggling again. Mm -hmm. I heard on the air Art Cashin and many others are mm -hmm. in, the, in the back of their voice are talking about triple top, triple top. That's exactly what I want to hear is, is skepticism. <laughs> and then if, if, if I'm right about the rule of four, uh, the fourth time we should punch through, and I think that's what's developing right now. The Dow and the S&P made margin of new highs a couple of days ago. We're doing kind of the dance right now, just a little back and fill. Uh, I suspect by the end of this week, this little back and fill thing will have run its course. There's some serious uh, trade negotiations going on in, in, in Japan with uh, China. Mm -hmm. And I know uh, President Xi and President Trump will be getting together the latter part of this week. Given my expectations for a, uh, a market that's going to power higher, my sense is whatever comes out of those meetings between the two presidents of the two largest economies on planet Earth is, is mm -hmm. resolutely positive. And what do you know? You and I wake up one morning and the futures are uh, – I pop into the upside. That's my expectation. We'll see, mm -hmm. uh, we'll see what pans out, but that's my expectation. Okay, that makes great sense. One of the listeners, we've got a break coming up here, but uh, uh, when we get back, I'd like for you to address the fact that uh, they're saying that they, they notice the uh, absence of any oscillators uh, on your uh, – on your uh, on your charts, do you want to you want to you, you're basically just look at cycles and uh, hey, stay with us, Stan. Could you do that, please? Absolutely. We got to pay, pay a few bills. Stan Harley, the Harley Stock Market Letter. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter, and we were discussing the fact that uh, when we look at Stan's charts, there don't there doesn't seem to be uh, too much of a use for oscillators. You want to address what your uh, you, actually what the what the question was, Stan, is uh, when you get ready to look at something, what do you start with, and how do you get to the conclusion? That's that's what they were asking. Uh, well, that's. There's, it's a complicated response to that. I look at a plethora of things. Of course, I'm a market technician. I look at charts. I'm primarily a cycles kind of guy. So I will look at a chart and initially, uh, through visual, visual inspection, try to spot recurring highs and lows. And uh, once I think I found something, then I will input the data into a spreadsheet and do a uh, regression analysis of the data. And if I can find evidence of a cycle that has a reasonable standard deviation, then I'm then I'm onto something. Uh, but I also use indicators uh, that uh, measure both track both price velocity as well as price range, yeah. and I it's the combination of the two across multiple time frames uh, that I use in, in trying to decide whether I think the markets are going up or down. Uh, I some some issues of the newsletter I put indicators in there, and some I don't. Uh, this particular issue uh, that just came out a couple days ago, I, I did not. Uh, I would uh, highlight, though, the fact that uh, I've got the Markle and market internals data in there. For example, I've got the advanced decline on hmm. and uh, an advanced decline oscillator that tracks a 10-day and 30-day moving average of the net difference between advances hmm. and declines. The, the, the advanced decline line, by the way, uh, which for those who may not know, is just a running summation of each day's net difference between advancing issues and declining issues on the New York Stock Exchange. And by maintaining a running summation of that data, we construct what's called an advanced decline line. Uh, many technicians utilize that tool. And the AD line, by the way, just made a new all-time high. Uh, so yeah. that is in, that, that's strongly supportive of my bullish thesis. Well, it's certainly playing out that way for sure. One other question that we have, Stan, and that is uh, the, the the work of the Foundation for the Study of Cycles and Edward Dewey. Did you look at any of his uh, work uh, that he did during those years that he was uh, quite famous during the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s? Dewey, absolutely I did, uh, Larry. Uh, I've got his book on my shelf. And then uh, when the Foundation for the Study of Cycles was back here in Irvine, California, Mm -hmm. I uh, I went to all the 
the uh, luncheon meetings and uh, the evening meetings for years and years. And uh, Dewey's uh, original notebook uh, was there for everybody to look at. And I uh, went to parsed his notes and looked at them very carefully. Yeah. Uh, it, I wish I could have met him, but uh, no, he came uh, came before me. And yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, well, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I can, hey, listen, I can remember trading back. I can remember trading those bonds back in 1680. That was how far back I. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, uh, thank you for being on our show. Tell the folks how they can reach you, Stan, and uh, get an idea of what you're doing. Uh, best way, a website is www.harleymarketletter.com. Okay, listen, I'm going to do my best to get up there soon and have lunch with you. I've been saying that, but this time it's for sure. Okay? <laughs> Look forward to it, Larry. All right, thank you very much. Stan Harley of the Stan Harley Stock Market Letter. And uh, I want to cover one other thing that one of our listeners was asking about, uh, and that was uh, – hold on just a second. got to get the chart up so we'll be able to see it. It will only take a second here, and that is the uh, market for the uh, – Gasoline, where is it? Uh, no, it was natural gas, but we'll cover it again uh, just because it was that. We did cover it once, but let's cover it again because it's such an important level here uh, down at that 218, 215 being the low. I think it was a slightly bit lower today. As long as we stay above that uh, 215 level, this has a chance to have a pretty good rally. You've got that three drive to a bottom pattern. Remember, this is a weekly, so this covers just about six months in here, and you'll see that that is a, a three drive to a bottom pattern pattern stopping right at the 78% level and that's why it's uh, that's why we think it's that important now sometimes they work sometimes they don't but that's uh, that's neither here nor there so we'll be a pretty good idea to see how these things actually uh, move on to some of the other things I know there's a lot of chatter this morning in the room this morning at the Tiger Den uh, talking about the hog market and uh, believe me Mr. Z I have uh, Mr. Anderson on it and also Mr. Monley on it because because uh, those folks are in the business, and uh, what's going on in that hog market is uh, very, very unusual because we have this uh, Asian flu out there, uh, and it's supposed to decimate the Chinese herd. And remember, there's 1.5 billion Chinese. There's only 388 here, a million here in the United States. So uh, something's not right in Denmark, boys and girls. I don't know what it is, but we have to pay uh, very, very close attention to it. There's one other stock that uh, I think deserves our attention. If you'll give me one second here, I'll get it up. Of course, it's one of the FANG stocks, and that is Facebook because it's under a great deal of investigationing, uh, in investigation here. You'll notice here that uh, uh, we have a pretty strong rally here off of our bottom on December the 26th. We're up here around that 195 level. Uh, we still haven't broken above the 78% level, slight divergence, but this stock is in the news, folks. They're trying to put some regulations on. Probably there should be some because, you know, social network is uh, pretty powerful. And if you don't control it, uh, at least somewhat, you know, what are you going to do? They can take anybody off at any time and, uh, you know, then they tell you what they want to hear. That's uh, – well, we certainly live in different interesting times, don't we, folks? That actually happens to be a Chinese curse, so uh, we'll go on to the next one. We had one other uh, FANG stock that we wanted to cover that uh, looks like it could be ready to either go straight down from here or straight up, and that is Netflix. As you can see uh, on the chart of Netflix, uh, I believe it was probably a short up there around 269. I don't know where it's trading right now, but I wouldn't risk more than $7 on that. But that was a very nice Gartley pattern in a short-term downtrend. Uh, it's got the things necessary to put the trade on, AB equals CD, really good price symmetry between AB and CD. All of that lines up. I don't trade stocks at all, folks. In fact, I got a tip yesterday, uh, Friday, I got a tip yesterday from, uh, what, what was the stock? It was Allegan, one of these stocks that went up uh, 30%. I can't remember the name of it, but uh, it jumped 30% yesterday. A guy didn't know anything about any buyout or anything like that, but he had a chart pattern that he really liked and sent it on to me and said, this looks like it's getting ready to go up. And then this morning, he sent me an email showing that it had gone up. So uh, I can't remember what the name of the darn – I can pull it up here in email, but I don't want to waste that time. Uh, let, yeah, I should do it. You know, If I'm going to say something about it, I ought to do that. Let me get up here and see if I can get this thing the way it should be, and then we'll get you the name of this stock. Oh, that's not what I want to – 
it's a trouble when you hit the wrong buttons at my age. It's, uh, oh dear, this is sick. I have to get inbox. Uh, where are you, Alan? Come on, dog on it. Where does that stock at? Uh, I don't have it. Son of a gun. Ah, nope, that's not it. Now, well, I'll find it and I'll let you know uh, at the end of this break that's coming up here. We'll certainly have it for you. Where are you, Alan? Doggone it. You're here in the email somewhere. I didn't delete you. Oh, shucks. I'm wasting time here. I hate to do that, but that's neither here nor there. I'm going to find this because I think it's important enough because that's the first time someone, and, and that was a tip ahead of time, and I didn't, uh, I actually didn't have anything to do. We'll take a little break here, and I'll get back and talk about this stock just a little bit here. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, uh, we posted a chart here of October sugar. We've been down seven days in a market that looks like it's turned higher. The difference between the 61% retracement and the 50% retracement where we are now is $200. And if you like sugar, you got to take that risk. So uh, sugar looks like it wants to go higher from here, folks. Just being down that many days in a row should be positive. One correction, 
when we were talking about crude oil folks, the August crude that I was looking at, the number was not 50 above 5,900. Uh, it was above 5,800. 5,832, I believe, was the number, the 61% retracement on that, uh, whether it's going to be doing. It's at 1240, so it's trading uh, just about uh, exactly at the 50% retracement. So, you know, your risk there is... Uh, you know, you got to risk 400 bucks, darling. But if it works, it's going to be a good one because uh, look how many days in a row we're down. We're down eight days in a row, and the most it can do is drop half a cent. That's not bearish. That looks pretty bullish, as a matter of fact. I'll have to check my fundamental note sheet, Ruby, to make sure the fundamentals line up with this because it's uh, – it ought to be pretty good. I have a I have a running joke with uh, with Cy only about the fundamentals because when I first met Cy many years ago, there was a market that was way up in the air, sugar, and he was so wildly bullish, and I had to really work on him to say, gee, he he didn't think it. Well, never mind. Let's uh, we're going to have Cy hopefully on tomorrow or Friday, depending upon his travel uh, situation, because there's a lot of things going along in these grains and tariff stuff, and he's involved in some of these uh, negotiations, whether that means anything or not. We'll try to have, if uh, between Thursday and Friday, we'll have Rich Anderson on on either one of those days in between. And then on Thursday, of course, we have the wizard himself from, uh, where is he from, Naples, Florida, uh, Norm Winsky. And Norm, you got to give Norm some credit, folks. He's had some really great calls on these minute-to-minute it moves. In fact, Mr. Z pointed one out today that uh, the bottoming on that uh, solstice uh, uh, was really, you know, spot on. So we'll keep a close eye on that. So those are the things that we're watching today. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude. And may God bless. And folks, try to do something nice for someone that doesn't have as much as you. May God bless.